Yo, everybody, my name is Jamel, and I have a question for you. Can you think of something you love about yourself? I got something about me. The thing that I love about myself is that I'm talkative. And that was something that's really helpful to me now at age 32 and age 11, when I was in sixth grade and all throughout middle school. I was the dude that whenever there was a new person to any group, whether it's church or school or sports team, all my friends basically pushed me towards that person, was like, Jamel will talk to them. And I did, I loved it. And what's great about that quality is that it helped me make other people feel comfortable, which is good for everybody. Maybe thinking of one thing you love about yourself is mad easy, but for some of us, it just isn't. Because even if we're absolutely killing it in some areas of our lives, it's easy to feel like there are always places where we need to get better. And sometimes it feels like those things are the only ones we or anybody else can see. Maybe you're struggling to keep up on the team and your coach is always asking you to step up your game. Maybe your grades are failing and your teacher is always telling you to do better. Maybe you're not always good at being patient. Your siblings tell you that you're mean because of it. Listen. I could go on and on with a list of stuff like this for my own life. I think we all probably could. That's because we're people. We all have things to work on, areas to grow in, things we want to become, and we always will. And maybe that's good news to you because you want to see some change in yourself. Maybe you want to be more patient with people or you want to be known for being a kind person. I know that's on my list. Or you want to be more loving in how you respond to people. But the problem is that you're just not sure how to actually do that. You don't know where to begin to become more of the person that you actually want to be. Or maybe, this sounds a little exhausting, doesn't it, in some ways? Or even overwhelming to you? Because you've tried. You've tried really hard to change in some positive ways, but you never feel like you can get there. It's hard to want to keep trying when you feel like you just never end up working it out. Maybe you've never thought about this before. Sure, there's stuff you could work on, but you're not even sure where to start. Or maybe you good with who you are. <laughs> Do you really need to change anything about yourself when you already feel great about who you are right now? No matter where you land in this conversation, there's one thing I know is true for all of us. Whether you're a middle schooler or an adult, we're all still becoming who we're going to be. And that means no matter who or where we are, we all grow and change in positive ways to become more of who God has created us to be. Let me break this down for you real quick. I'm gonna get what you've always wanted to see, a bowl of fruit. Are you familiar with the fruit of the spirit? Not real fruit, even though we have a bowl of fruit here. We're talking about the list of qualities that show the world Jesus. Just like real fruit can tell us about the tree it comes from, the qualities we produce show other people who we are and what we're all about. When we believe in and follow God, the Holy Spirit works in us to help us become more like Jesus, to have more of the fruit of God's Spirit in our lives. If you don't know what these qualities are yet, Here's the list, straight out the Bible. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, here's what I think is so important to remember about this list. It's not stuff we have to do on our own. If we want to be more loving, more patient, more joyful, we don't have to figure it out by ourselves because the qualities on this list are part of the fruit of God's spirit. That means apart from the Holy Spirit, we can't get there. But with the spirit, when we're connected to Jesus, the fruit, the good qualities begin to grow step by step, transforming us to become more of these things. You know, figurative fruit, not real fruit. Okay, we done with real fruit now. In the same letter, we find the fruit of the spirit. The author, a guy named Paul, shared a better understanding of what this really means. Paul was the leader who helped start the movement of Christianity just after Jesus died and rose again. Jesus changed Paul's whole life and Paul dedicated his life to starting churches and sharing his faith. That's exactly what he was doing in this letter. He wrote to Christians in a town called Galatia. Paul wanted the Galatians to know that there was always a way to see change and grow and good things come into their lives. Even when they messed up or made mistakes, like we all do, even when things were not going great, even when they didn't even think about it, good, positive change was possible because of Jesus. Take a look at what he wrote earlier in his letter. My old self 
has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, at first glance, I get it. How weird this may sound. So let's break it down, all right? When Jesus died on the cross, he did it for us, to make a way for us to be close to God, to right the wrongs in the world, to make it possible for us to start over and become brand new, no matter our mistakes. It's pretty tight, right? It is to me, at least. Because it means that with Jesus, there's always hope for new things to grow and develop in me and all of us. There's always a way to change. But even better than that, we don't have to do the change by ourselves. Jesus made sure of that. When we choose to put our trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit works in us to make us more like Jesus. The Holy Spirit helps grow the qualities of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. So instead of putting pressure on ourselves to change the things we don't love, we can simply connect to Jesus and trust the Spirit will grow those qualities in us as we walk step by step with Jesus. Woo, ain't that tight? I'm hype on that, I hope y'all are hype too. All right, random question. How many of y'all are baseball or softball fans? I mean, I never played much more than Little League, but I do know a thing or two about the game, you know what I'm saying? But I wanna introduce you to someone who does know a lot about baseball, my homie, Brett. Check out what he has to say. To you, Brett. What's up, Jamel? So in a softball game, a baseball game, a player is gonna have a few at bats every single game to try to do something helpful for their team. And the goal is not to hit a home run every single time you come up. So smart baseball players know that when they practice, they're not trying to hit home runs every single time. You're just trying to become a better batter to better help your team every single game. And our faith works in a similar way. It's not about getting it right every single time. It's not about being perfect. In fact, our faith really isn't about doing anything. It's about letting the Spirit of God do the work in us. The more we step up to the plate and connect with Jesus, the easier it will be to hit a home run in life over time. Here's the cool part about this. The Holy Spirit is already at work. I bet there is some amazing, awesome, incredible people up in your church. People made by God, people loved by God, people who show the fruit of the Spirit in their lives in all kinds of amazing ways. More than anything, I want you to be able to see the same in yourself. I want you to look for the Holy Spirit in you. Does that feel confusing? If you want to see the fruit of God's Spirit grow in your life, how do you begin? If you want to look for the Spirit, like, Spirit, where you at? Where do you start? How about try these two things? First, think about yourself. Think about the way you interact with other people in your world, the way you talk to your friends, the people you live with, your teachers, your coaches. Think about the thoughts you think and the habits that you have. Where do you show kindness? Where do you feel joy? How do you show peace to others? Are the things you're doing, saying, thinking, and believing helping you? Or are they holding you back from the person God has made you to be? Second, Look for the Holy Spirit. Where do you see God in these things you just thought about? Think about your actions, your relationships, your thoughts, your habits. Where do you see the qualities of God's fruit? Where do you see God expressing joy in you? Where do you see God's kindness in your actions towards others? Where do you see God working in you when it comes to self-control? What parts of your life might be better with more of the Holy Spirit at work in you. I know this was a lot to unpack. That's why we're going to keep the conversation going today in groups. Your group is a great place where you can begin to look for God working in yourself and in the people in your group. Your group and your leader want to be the people in your life who help you see Jesus in you, even when that might be difficult to do. Remember, there are so many amazing things about who you are right now. When we see areas of change or growth in our lives, it's not because we have to be perfect in order to be loved or accepted. No, no, no. It's not because God expects us to get it right or be good 100% of the time. Never, never. It's because God loves us and wants what's best for us and the world around us. The fruit of the Spirit showing up in our lives is just proof of that love. It's proof that you can always look for the Holy Spirit in you.